very close to 9.30, past our 9 o'clock. Thank you. I'll try to keep it short then. Uh, personally, for me, I feel that these very important questions about race, ethnicity, uh, multiculturalism, religion, uh, I there's two issues that they address, well, among many others. Uh, one being tolerance, uh, specifically, do we decide what is toler tolerable? And uh, the other one being the extent to which the government has the right to interfere in a person's private life. And that was really brought home to me a couple months ago. I was in a dinner party. And I was explaining my program of studies on African transnational studies to somebody I met there. I would include the interview this question. Well, it's not really a question, an opinion. They said, I think that you know, if I were in politics, I would outlaw circumcision because I think that it's a violation of that infant's human rights because they don't have the opportunity to decide if that is something that they want. And that, that was really interesting for me. I, as much as I was sort of taken aback by the question, I think you do occasionally see instances where the government does become involved in religion, specifically in, in a person's private life, and say, you know, this, despite the fact that it might be justified as in this practice, is incorrect. I think a lot of us will remember uh, recently the example of honor killings, for example, and the general consensus was that that was, despite the fact that maybe you by certain religious practices or a person's personal beliefs, um, that did not, that was not acceptable under the laws of Canada. Uh, but I'm curious to hear what your opinions are on the issues of the circumcision and the more broader sense the extent to which the government should or can interfere in a person's private life or, or religious practice. Yeah, I think circumcision is a very interesting example. And, and a, <coughs> that's not so much a person's private life as a shift in, at least in the US context, in, um, and I think more globally, in, in understanding a child as a person. Uh, and, and so I think the rights of the child then it's one of the things that brings that home, and the, and the sense of the child uh, is not consenting in that sense. It, it, um, so I think that's a shift in our sort of sensibilities about whether children are sort of the possessions of their parents. Um, in the U.S., basically, children don't have religious rights that are separate from their parents. But then in that example, then how would you go about deciding which rights are attacked? to the, the interaction. I just had a couple of comments and, and a quick question. Um, the gentleman, the black gentleman, said that he thinks it's a matter of race fundamentally. And what I found really interesting is I grew up in Alberta. I was born in Scotland. But the minute I put on a few yards of fabric, all of a sudden I was the other. And I was asked, when did you come to Canada? Why do you speak good English? Well, no, we don't speak Cantonese in Alberta. So all of a sudden, I become the other. And so I think it is possibly a fundamental race issue. And um, my other uh, comment is I really was fascinated by um, your uh, comment about this ritual of Christianity. Because I would say, actually, we don't remember enough Christianity to see that we are not the other. Because I often get asked, are you a type of a nun? Um, you know, uh, all these kind of things that were once very much part of Christianity. Uh, I say, well, we'll have some Aquarius about Christianity, and we are like the, you know, the pioneers that wore bonnets. So I think we forget what is not um, acceptable anymore of our own, and that leads to less understanding of that we all kind of want. And your comment about the, Sikh, the British that was uh, in India had no problem with Gurkha warriors wearing turbans. So I think it, I think we should have more history that that we have commonalities rather than differences. I think that was a little comment, a long comment. But my question is, with the Boko Haram case, is it not under appeal, and is it not? Oh, yeah. it did go. So what is the definition of religious law? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what is the definition now of religion in the U.S.? There is no definition of religion in the U.S. Um, it, it depends you know, on the particular uh, statute, etc. Um, so, uh, but that would be... Um, so, so there is no general definition of religion in the U.S. The 
nobody in charge of what religion is. I can't say that enough. There's no one in charge. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say but that. I, I do think we all need to know more history. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> on the point of history, uh, I want to say here, here. We, there is an idea that Canada is a secular society now as if secular rationality were universal and neutral and culturally free. Uh, but part of forgetting our history, or, or the way we can believe that, the way we can believe there's a separation of church and state in Canada is only by forgetting our history. And if we studied our history, we'd understand that Canadian secularism is actually Canadian post-Christian secularism, and, and therefore has a certain flavor, a certain tone, a certain direction, uh, and uh, it is not universally valid, it is not uh, universally rational and applicable, and, and therefore it, it has to be the subject of debate, negotiation, and conversation, and dialogue. That the, the, the secularism is not a absolute solution. It is a solution to a problem that has now raised new problems, and we have to move forward on those problems, and I'm very encouraged to see the Security and Human Rights Commission doing so with this conference. Thank you. I know there are still many more questions in the room, and unfortunately we're not going to get to um, answer them tonight, but I hope you'll keep them, and I hope you'll find opportunities through this process to I want to thank our, our speakers today, uh, Professor David Sheldrack and Professor Winifred Sullivan, who have been a very excellent day. And just before I present them with envelopes, um, I would uh, like to remind all of you that on Friday afternoon, there's another public lecture on human rights and wrongs, religion and creed in the public sphere. And that's in the same room. Is that right? No. It's the same building. So if you come here, there'll be a big sign in the, in the lobby. Registration at 1, opening remarks at, at 1.30 until 3.30. So there'll be some um, Professor Richard Moon and uh, Ian Benson, uh, two people with a lot of uh, knowledge and experience in dealing with, with issues of, of creed and faith will be speaking. So I hope to see many of you then, as well as uh, please go to our website and uh, come out to future, to future sessions as we find um, the direction for the new revised policy on creed uh, for the Ontario Human Rights System. Thank you very much.